All eyes are on Hurricane Ernesto as it gets stronger and heads towards our friends in Bermuda and eventually, potentially, Atlanta, Canada. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Keg is back with you. We're, of course, going to jump right into it to talk about Ernesto, but there's also going to be an indirect risk to the eastern seaboard of the U.S. with rip currents, some coastal flooding potential, especially into the northeast. We're going to break that part down towards the end of the video. If you want to stay updated on what is left of Ernesto as it works and gets stronger to Bermuda, hit that subscribe button and the rest of Hurricane Z in which, again, we are on August 15th, typically 85% of the season is still yet to come beyond uh, in terms of named storms coming in the, the direction. So again, a lot of the season still to go. So hit that subscribe button. Here is our hurricane right now. There's some things going on with the satellite that I want to break down first. You see the big bright flare up there, especially as we go through the early afternoon. Then it kind of pulsed back down a little bit. And then if you can see where my mouse is, we have a few of those green and blue blotches popping up right in the middle. And that is an indication that it is fighting off some dry air. So right off the bat, relatively speaking, I mean, we still have a hurricane coming, potentially a Cat 2, borderline Cat 3 coming towards Bermuda. But nonetheless, that is going to prevent any kind of rapid intensification right now. It has to clear its eye and clean it out of all of that dry air, mix it out, as we call it. So that is one thing. The other thing is it's a wide storm. It's a wide center as well. So go back to your physics class back in the day. Remember the figure skater diagram when the figure skater puts their arms out wide, they spin slow, and then once the figure skater brings their arms in, they spin fast. Same kind of deal. When you have these bigger storms like this, whenever you start talking about strengthening, when the pressure drops, it does take longer for the wind speeds to come up in response to the storm getting stronger. So relatively speaking, a second positive. With that said, though, it's not looking the greatest for Bermuda as we work our way over the next couple of days. Let me slide the graphic over so you can clearly see. Again, we are right smack dab just about in the middle of the cone. Uh, regardless, even if we start to transition outside of the cone, it looks like this is going to pass just to the west of Bermuda, which would bring the worst impacts to the island. Now we want to keep on going west to maybe stay out of the eye wall. That could be a little bit of a consolation uh, at that point, but nonetheless, uh, we never like to see something like this. And I'll show you the model forecasts in just one second to kind of illustrate what I'm talking about. But let me zoom things out here just to give you the latest five o'clock advisory. Again, the pressure down 972, the winds at 85 miles an hour. Once we get towards the northeast side of Nova Scotia, closer to Sydney, closer to Halifax on the eastern side, there's the potential for the center to come very very close to the island again remember that cone forecast is where the center could go the storm is very very big so if the storm does travel on the western side of the cone then we're going to have higher impacts in nova scotia we are still fully in the cone so really the eye can pass offshore on the eastern side can go right down the middle or make a landfall in newfoundland so that solution unfortunately still on the table at the very least that center could come close and offshore but remember the storm is big although the worst of the weather is on the eastern side of the storm so there's still going to be a lot to iron out in its uh midterm life here going forward that would be crossing as a uh, strong tropical storm maybe still a low-end hurricane by the time that gets there that would be later into the evening on monday there's the 80 mile per hour marker all right so i think this is going to help to illustrate things a little bit too let me go back and i'm going to show you the models and then we're going to break down the wind field here Notice how most of these models are right on, are going to be right on the west side of Bermuda. So you see the grouping there. The official center, that's where it says OFCL, that's the official forecast. So that's right smack dab down the middle of the cone. Uh, once we start to see some of the more reliable ones, like the TV con is reliable, um, this is going to be the GFS in yellow. Uh, so just keep that in mind that we have a lot of reliable computer forecast kind of honing in to the center passing just to the west of Bermuda, which again will put us on the worst side of the storm. So let's kind of overlay that now uh, on, I'll show you these models for Atlantic Canada first, and then I'm going to show you the wind field. Notice how we have a grouping that does keep uh, the center of the storm off of the coast of Nova Scotia. We would still get some impacts because, again, the storm is relatively big. And then we do have another grouping that keeps the center off of Newfoundland, but still a lot of these hurricane models wanting to keep it close uh, where St. John's is at. So just keep that in mind that we are still in a landfall potential here as we move through the day on Monday night 
and into early Tuesday morning. Now, in terms of this wind field, this is what we're going to have to watch going forward here because that's going to be the difference of... Uh, that's going to be the wind probability. The wind field is what I want to show you because remember, we have this whole thing now starting to work its way uh, north. And if we have that little donut right about here, that would put us in those hurricane force winds as we move into, again, uh, later on Friday and then especially into Saturday. So that's what we have to watch out for. And we're going to expect those hurricane winds to also grow because, again, it's a larger system. It takes a longer time to intensify, but it also has a larger wind field as a result. Now, getting into the hurricane force wind chance, we're going to zoom into Bermuda and we're going to be in that second yellow. So that's going to be a 40 to 50 percent shot for sustained hurricane force winds so that's going to be a, a much easier opportunity to get into those hurricane force gusts and that's going to be 75 miles per hour or greater so again right now a 40 percent chance uh, for hurricane force sustained winds on the island of bermuda once we get into friday night and then to start the weekend on saturday and of course that's going to be a little bit further out um, but you see a much lower percentage as we start to work our way into newfoundland especially because uh, most of the modeling anywhere at least half of the modeling keeps it out to sea. We're going to break down some other perspective here. This is going to be the European model itself. And I mean, look at that again. The center going to be right here. Uh, here is Bermuda. And we can take a look at what some of the winds are going to be. And again, these are going to be sustained winds of about 68, 70 miles an hour. So again, closing in on that hurricane force at that point. Um, so that's going to be something to watch over the next couple of days. Then we have a well-defined center. Still, we have wind speeds right around the island uh, of about 50 miles an hour. That's going to be still Saturday evening. And then once we get beyond Saturday night, really into Sunday, things start to improve significantly on the island. So now we're going to go up into the North Atlantic. And notice again, we still have very strong winds. Um on that eastern side of the storm the european thankfully though wants to keep this i mean it wants to keep the center very very close that would be a landfall very very close um really close to a landfall there but the strongest of the winds are clearly uh coming back down we don't want 50 mile per hour winds either but they're also centered off of newfoundland at least from the european perspective again if it does come in where some of those western models were like here then we would have all of this displaced to the west so that's why we're going to watch those wobbles and how this thing eventually comes together over the next uh, couple of days in terms of the rainfall again a ton of rain coming and this basically shows you the track here what we just kind of broke down so in terms of the rain i mean again 19 20 inches of rain just off of the coast of bermuda through the island of bermuda so significant rain event as you may imagine with a tropical system coming through and then this only goes out a, a few days uh longer so this is going to undersell the rain in newfoundland but we're going to have more updates on that as uh, we get closer to we can kind of pinpoint and fine tune where that's going to go lastly i talked about uh some of the the rip current risks and and things like that now again it is obviously much much better than having a direct impact from a hurricane but unfortunately we see it every year People getting into the water when the red flags are flying and there's a strong hurricane off of the Atlantic coast displaced by a couple hundred miles or so. And uh, we get those height, height and rip current, uh, the height and rip current threat. So again, off Cape, uh, Cape Hatteras, the Outer Banks, we're talking about six, seven foot uh, waves. Same deal off the coast of Florida. Again, the biggest day for Florida is going to be on Friday. The rip current risk continues into Saturday as well. But still, big time waves closer to Bermuda. And if I were to back that up, we would be talking about 40 foot waves. Um, let me replay that scene for you so I can show you. Um, and there we go with the strongest, again, pushing 35 feet, 27 feet all through there those big waves like that are then going to push a lot of water um into new england so long island sound and stuff be watching for the potential for some coastal flooding from this um as we have those winds coming out of the north and west uh, as we moved sunday into monday and again those waves are going to be pretty big and then eventually potentially anyway some coastal flooding um into maine as we have that now southerly wind that's what that white is there on your screen 
pushing everything up into uh, New Brunswick, into Maine, and then into Nova Scotia as well, while the system itself has now lifted uh, Monday, and that's 10 o'clock at night, very, very close to the coast of Newfoundland. Alrighty, guys, if you found this content helpful and you like to learn some stuff about the weather and have this weather conversation, you've come to the right place, please hit that subscribe button. Again, we're thinking of everybody in Bermuda. Please take this storm seriously. We're going to continue to wish cast this thing to go way, way west and kind of split the difference. It does not look like that's going to happen. And the potential for a wind gusts of over 100 miles an hour on the island are going to be a real thing as we get into Friday and then especially uh, during the morning on Saturday. Be safe out there, everybody. We'll take it easy and we'll catch you next time.